Hello everybody, I'm Conquering History Game, and welcome back to my Millenniumist campaign playthrough here in uh, Suzerain. Oh, forgot the music. There we go. Uh, so, let's get back to it. Uh, this is part 16. Um, we're going to do budget allocation of healthcare. I don't really think there's a whole lot of reason to read through this, probably. Uh, yeah, let's begin. Pascal's here. Troubling uh, music, so there's polio. Uh, what are we doing to prepare? All of our healthcare staff, there's the more rural areas where we lack equipment and staff. Our researchers were told with the current infection rate, there will soon be millions of people affected by polio. We need to be ready for any possibility. Um, yes, yes, of course, let's start. In general, I am very content with the body decision was made. This comes as a very pleasant surprise that we all welcomed at the main mystery. The overall mood has been positive as the administration focused more on the healthcare. I am excited about what we can achieve with the allocated funds. Uh... Okay, providing better healthcare is our goal. I'm invested to solve the horrible infant and maternal death rates. Uh... This goes against our economic... Drug. Oh yeah, so Pascal wants to do privatization. Health is a key factor people expect to have in public hands. Aside from creating additional funds, there's a long-term problem with privatization in a country like Swordland. You are right, there might be structural issues, especially due to private greed and market manipulation. Uh, I do agree that there is some concern there, but the benefits of competitive and quality services is great. This is not Arcasia or Lesbia, you're talking about Swordland, in which the healthcare is free for now. We have uh, people whose lives depend on a service that is free to them. Messing with that structure will definitely hurt us politically in the future, that I know for sure. But the choice is yours. We'll keep healthcare in state control, don't allow any private involvement that can endanger core healthcare health services. Uh, I think this is about this is about it. Oh yeah, what are we gonna do here? What do we wanna do with our extra funds? Let's go to rural areas, because that's where the polio is gonna hit. Um Let's see here. Yeah, improve rural treatment, higher health staff, and upgrade equipment. That is all. Thank you for the meeting. Nice and short. <laughs> awesome. So, super simple meeting. Rural healthcare is going to be improved, and healthcare is in state control. Radical! Ishval Ersin is right. The troubling and justified case of Ishval Ersin is making its way to the lower courts of the Ministry of Justice and by order of the Supreme Court thereafter. The systemic racism felt around the country seems to know no limits, especially when it comes to the largest minority of our nation. The truth is that the situation is very bleak and the bloodish people demand their long-awaited rights. The Constitution protects the individual rights on paper, but those who uphold and enforce the law pay little attention to such legalities. It gets even worse when justified legal cases like these are made in appeal to the Supreme Court. The general outcome is always depressingly unjust. Unfortunately, no one expects otherwise in the case either. Okay, so, um... I've said before, the radical is kind of a, a good barometer for the direction we should be going. So we're going to be going with Erson if we get any, um, if we get anything to, to influence that. Highway's halfway done. What do we got here? Talks with Ketharo Kibna. Uh, this ought to be fun. The final preparations for Swordland's new constitution were nearly complete. Um... Hmm. Uh, soon it would be present in the Grand National Assembly, a huge step for the administration. Then it would be on to the Supreme Court. Click, damn it. Uh, I had invited Kazaro Kibner, um, leader of the National Front Party, to have a private chat about my proposal. He was supposed to be in my office 20 minutes ago. Late, huh? So let's review Kibner. So Kizaro Kibner is a Swordish politician and the leader of the National Front Party. He has been a member of the Assembly since 1937. He represents the far right of Swordish politics. Despite his views, he is respected by nationalists on both sides of the political spectrum. <coughs> Excuse me. Before his political career, he was enrolled into a military school and graduated from Swordland State University with an arts degree. After briefly pursuing a career as a propaganda artist, he joined the Swordish Armed Forces in 1927. 
Although not verified by the state or himself, he was rumored to be the private who announced General Luderin's 1927 coup against the government of Artur Visky on radio broadcast, which earned him great fame among the populace. In 1930, he founded the National Front Party, together with a group of nationalists from Gen. During the 1930s, he took a strong stance against immigration during the Well and Civil War and was blamed by a significant part of the population for inciting violence in the city streets against agno Sordish, and Bloodish people. <sighs> Sorry, just really thirsty. Had a, a overly salty lunch. Um, he organized countless meetings, panels, and helped form nationalist student organizations in the top universities in Sordland. He had given notable support... Uh, to the Young Swords organization from its founding to its expansion in the following years. In 1936, he was elected as the mayor of Jen, becoming the first mayor elected from the NFP. After serving as mayor until 1940, he was elected as a member of the assembly in 1941. After the elections of 1949, Cazaro was elected as the leader of the National Front and announced his bid for presidency. In 1949, Cazaro survived an assassination attempt, which boosted his popularity more than ever. He claimed the assassin was a bloodish separatist who wanted to erase Sordish identity. Kind of makes me think it was an inside job, doesn't it? Huh. Meaning like he set it up, the assassination attempt. In the 53 elections, he managed to get the best results of NFP and its history, effectively becoming the third largest party in Swordland and the Assembly. So, he's got a brown suit. His party pin is neatly attached. After firmly shaking hands, he sat down. Hmm. Why the delay? Why are you late, bitch? I was stopped by the police on my way here. I seem to be subject to more and more such random checks these days. He grinned. Seems key figures in my party have also reported obstructions from the state. It seems your reforms are sitting well with certain members of the old guard. Hold on, what's this? Welfare? Oh yeah, quality rural health services. Good, 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 good. Uh, he pulled out a cigarette along with a Rippo lighter and lit it up. You didn't even ask me if you could smoke in my office. Uh, apologies. May I smoke in your office, Mr. President? Well, they say you're supposed to get a, a last cigarette before you're shot, right? Go ahead. Thank you. I took a look at his lighter as he put it down on the table. It was a regular Rippo, but the shape appeared to be malformed. Looking more closely, I could see a large circular dent in the chrome plating. Did that stop the bullet? It's a bullet mark. Believe it or not, this lighter is the reason I'm alive today. I should be thankful that that damn assassin was bloodish. No wonder he was incompetent. The lighter took the short first shot. The second one grazed me right here. He pulled on his collar to reveal the scar on his neck. He tried to kill me. He could not save me on his own desires! Um, maybe I'll tell you the full story some other time. For now, let's talk about our collaboration. I know why you called me here. But before we get into the proposal, I'd like to discuss a few topics that I believe to be of higher priority. The bloodish independence movement, for example. Not only do the separatists pose an existential threat to us, they also threaten our neighbors and Velen. Closing the border with Velen has helped, but the countryside of Nargis and Bergia continues to be plagued by the BFF. Rumberg is using them to weaken us, and they might succeed if we do nothing to stop them. Let us not forget their caches of KA-74s in our country. Hmm. I'm gonna have to make some sort of deal with this guy. I'm gonna say, um, Wellen can take care of their own problems, and we will take care of ours. They're a weaker nation, both in heart and might. They won't have the capacity to handle the bloodish threat. It's like in one city in Wellen. <laughs> you know? That brings me to the Religious Harmony Bill. Our party and many members of the Parliament worked extremely hard on that proposal. But you decided to veto it. Why are you ignoring the problem? The Bloodish are using Nurity as a tool in their quest for independence. This is a direct threat. Hmm. The bill was practically a recruitment flyer for the BFF. The more of the, these we pass, the more followers they get. In this case, doing nothing is far worse. The BFF is actively using priests in majority bloodish areas. But let's not get off track. 
I also wanted to talk about the aid you received from United Contana. Do you think that's just free money? Do you think they offered it out of sheer goodwill? They cannot see me on their own desires! <laughs> you were fooled. They saw Swordland battling the recession and they pounced on it. You sold our national pride for money. Hmm. Uh, I don't see it. Let's see. I don't see anything wrong with accepting a helping hand. You are naive. I won't waste my breath further on this matter since you clearly don't understand. Look, I went over your proposed constitutional changes. Kazara opened his suitcase, took out a folder, and put the draft constitution papers on the table. I could see the scribbles he'd made in the margins. An election threshold increased to 15. Exactly whom do you think you're dealing with here? You cannot save me on your own desires! You do realize the NFP's current share of the vote is under this threshold, don't you? You're attempting to get my party to participate in its own destruction. You know that I will fight this until I last breath if I have to. So I'm asking you now, what did you even call me here for? Middle ground, I need you to help me just to have a chat. I'm offering an alliance between the USP and the NFP. You will not be affected by the threshold. An alliance, huh? Well, that's just plain old not true. On the other hand, if we can get them, we should, we'll lock it down. That'll put us at 170 signatures, and I think we need 160. Or 167. Yeah, it depends on how you do the math and like counting the member of honor and all that shit. <sighs> I'm offering an alliance between the USP and NFP. You will not be affected by the threshold. I see. An alliance, you say? You do know how to make a deal exciting, Mr. President. The new threshold would definitely keep the commies and the bloods out of the assembly. <laughs> Except the USP will become the commies. <laughs> he strokes his chin for a moment. He stroke his chin. Actually, I think that is more proper, that sentence. He stroke his chin. I can get behind it, but I'll have to work hard to convince the NFP. I assume you will do the same with your party. I'm sorry, I just remembered something urgent. I need to cut for a second. Okay, and we're back. <laughs> nothing, nothing super emergency, but I have to go do something real quick. Okay. Let's just say that it is on the table. I'm not worried about the rest of the contents in the constitutional changes in principle, but I assure you the rest of the assembly will be worried, very worried. If you don't have my backing, there's no way you can ever hope to pass this bill. That's why I want you to listen to me very carefully. As I mentioned, there are more pressing situations in Swordland right now. The BFF isn't even the half of it. Your outrageous decision to ban the young swords, for example. You have unfairly attacked a perfectly legal entity. One of the oldest organizations in this country, in fact, founded solely to defend pure swordish values. How many patriots have been prosecuted while the communists and United Content Moles get free reign? The Nationalists did not start this violence, it was the Reds. But it is no wonder a decision like this came from an ex-Red youth member. You must still have your sympathies for them. So you decide- You cannot save me on your own desires! Uh, you, you have decided to actively undermine your own nation in favor of millennialism and other dangerous foreign experts. Uh... Careful, Kazaro. Watch your words. Oh, give me a break. Kazaro clenched his fist. We will continue this conversation later. But let me put it simply. If you want my help, you will reverse the ban on the young swords immediately. Otherwise, we are done. If that's what it takes, then consider the young swords unbanned. I think that we get a, an option later. I think that there's a follow-up. Uh, from what I remember in my um, reformist Democrat run, there's something to do with the young swords and the red youth later. So I think we could just ban them again later. Fine, we'll unban them. That's what I like to hear now. There's the matter of the communists. Those damn rats are everywhere I look, trying to sneak into sword society from the crevices. You get rid of one, ten more appear. To me, this is a problem that needs to be solved. I want you to ban the red youth. Swordland has suffered enough from the disease these rats bring. Excuse me? Uh, absolutely not. I left them alone for a reason. I can't risk violence on the streets again. Maybe we can 
come to an agreement then. I was in Bergia some time ago when I visited one of their... By the way, if anybody out there is, is saying, Oh my god, I thought this was a Millennialist campaign, and here he is, he's allying with the people on the far right, this is bullshit. Um, the common turn... I'm talking about in our own world now. The common turn's number one priority was getting communists in power by any means necessary. Just like how for me fascists, they just wanted to get in power by any means necessary. Now, I know everybody likes to talk about, and I'm not giving my opinions either way on any of this, I'm just talking about the historical facts. Um, everybody likes to talk about the United States, you know, propping up non-democratic regimes, because they'd rather have a non-democratic regime that was aligned with them than a, um, than a democratic regime that was aligned with the communists. So, you know, sometimes you can make compromises. And the Comintern did things like that. Stalin himself via the Comintern, instructed the German Communist Party to work with the Nazis. That was happening in the 30s, believe it or not, as late as the 1930s in the Weimar Republic in Germany. Of course, Germany was just a total mess in the 20s and 30s. It's just, well, no, there was there was actually some periods of calm, but, but it got crazy in the Weimar. It certainly did at different times. Um, because you know what communists and fascists hate more than each other? Liberals and social democrats. Um... And, uh, so anyway, if anybody say, this is unrealistic, hey, by any means necessary, we gotta just get this damn constitution passed, and then I'm gonna have all the power, <laughs> and I will force, I will force progressivism and reform and millennialism on this nation, whether it likes it or not. Okay, anyway, I was in, I was in Bergia some time ago when I visited one of their village schools. I went in to greet the students. To my shock, none of these children knew how to speak Swordish. Can you believe it? They didn't understand me. Their own countrymen. I went to the nearby villages. All of them were the same. Not a single soul spoke Swordish. That put me on the path to draft a new bill. This bill, I called it the Unified Education Language Act, will enforce our language as the only one accepted in educational institutions. Uh... Your answer is to ban them completely from speaking Bledish at school? They can speak to each other in whatever language they want, but they must learn Swordish. That's it. I want to be clear. This was not a request for you to take a look. You will either sign my bill or ban the Red Youth. If you can't do either one, say goodbye to your reform package. Well, I should have known if the glory the Gloria Tory negotiation went too simply, so I knew it was gonna have to be rough somewhere else. Hmm. Do I turn on the red youth or do I turn on the bloodish? It's not like either of them has a lot of votes in the assembly right now. I can't ban the Red Youth. No, I definitely can't ban the Red Youth because I can't get that achievement then because I think that there's also something later where you can, like, I think spend your personal money or is it the nation's money? But I, no, it's your own personal money, I think, where, like, you can fund one of the youth organizations and it's like if you were a young sword and then you later fund the young swords, that's an achievement. And the same thing for if you're a Red Youth and you later fund the Red Youth. Uh, so I want to get that achievement. Well, I guess we're going to have to sign this damn education bill. It is the lesser of the two evils. Um, uh, you will get your sign. Oh, oh, I like this. I will sign the bill when I receive it. Could I just lie to him? Nah, he's probably going to put it through before the constitutional vote, so I'm going to be stuck. See, that wasn't so hard, was it? Seeing beyond your own desires? I knew we could find some common ground. Very well, the NFP and I will support you in your reform package. Congratulations, Mr. President. Well then, Mr. President, my respect for you has increased a hundredfold within the short span of this meeting. Make sure you deliver your end of the promise. I have never broken my word in my life. We shook hands, and Kazaro turned around to leave. Before he left, he turned around. Catch! Catch the object he threw. It was his lighter. The same one that had saved him from assassination. I moved my thumb around the bullet mark. A gift. Kazaro closed the door and left my office. Huh. Interesting. 
<laughs> oh man. I'm gonna light up a real I'm gonna light my pipe up real nice with it when I throw you and your cronies back in jail. Anyway, <laughs> offered an alliance between NFP and USP in order to convince Kazaro I promised him I will sign his upcoming bill in order to convince Kazaro I reverted the ban on young swords. Uh Rain meets Kibner, Kibner backs Rain's reforms. The National Front must stand together with President Rain and the USP. Okay, the NFP's votes, chances for passing the reforms in the assembly just got higher. Hmm. Very interesting stuff. Award company contract. Several companies have put forward their bids for the new investment project. <gasps> oh, guys, let's do underhaul. <coughs> That's what I say to that. Uh, the SSC, Underhaul Construction, and Taurus Holding Companies put forward their bids in the hopes of winning the government contract for the new ambitious investment project. Which company should we pick to lead the project? We'll, of course, do the Swordish State Corporation easy choice Volgan what's going on over here updates on the situation of education uh, I don't even know if we have to do any, any particular thing here reminiscing about the past how were your re or university years oh the usual story a few friends dead a couple of them missing after the coups oh and I was almost arrested once uh, hmm what for protesting against police brutality Ironic, isn't it? Uh, let's not get sidetracked. Uh, welcome surprise. Additional funds are being used in the best way possible. Uh, lead our education system in the right direction. The students of now will thank us in the future, President Rain, for we have unlocked the potential of critical thought this society desperately needed. In this way, you have surpassed all the leaders before you. You played a huge part in this too, Kiara. I'm optimistic about the path that lies ahead of us now. Okay, papers. Okay, so how are we going to spend it? We could build new rural schools, improve the standards of existing ones, or increase salaries for all education workers. We have the capacity to implement only one of these options. Uh, probably go rural, huh? Um, although... Build new rural schools or improving rural schools? What's the difference? If we build new ones, it, let's see. We don't have we don't have literacy. United Cantana is pushing past Arcasian education and research. It's because most of their rural population has access to schools. So how about we improve the ones that exist? Where to start? At the very least, they need new equipment and materials. There's a shortage of desks and test books. The ones that aren't haven't been updated since before the Seoul administration. If teachers lack the resources to give Sora Shu the proper education, it can't be as, it'll, can be as bad as if they don't go to school at all. Um, I guess we'll build new rural schools, kind of like with the hospitals. Increase access to education. It feels great. Plus, that's what United Contana did, so let's do that as well. It feels gratifying that we are finally serving the people directly. I will pass it down to the ministry. That's all there is for now. I have talked with Miss Suno to uh, schedule some time to discuss the curriculum. She's a very astute woman, your secretary. You may want to consider promoting her. That's awkward. Uh, we'll meet again very soon. Keep up the good work. All right, I like this. Some quick meetings, quick stuff, quick stuff. You know, nice change of pace from the marathon ones. The agricultural thing. Uh, well in for uh, well in refugees fleeing to the Swordish border. International reporters are no longer being allowed in Velen. Information from the country has become difficult to obtain. Richter rallies against soulless reform proposal. If even the PFJP thinks the reforms are ineffectual, they must be downright milk toast. And chances are they'll be watered down even further by the time the assembly votes on them. We're not holding our breath for meaningful change. You might be in for a surprise, Radical. Or I might be in for a drubbing. Country overview, accessible rural education, green light, that's what I'd like to see. What's next? Next one, next thing. Briefing on the curriculum of the schools. Uh, what? Oh, I think this is where we, uh, yeah, good afternoon, Kiara. Oh, no. Kiara, I sound like you! Anyway, I'll cut straight to the chase. Our progressive reform of the Swordland education system is well underway, but there's one sticking point. It involves evolution versus creationism. As it currently stands, schools across Swordland can decide whether to include revolution, creationism, or both in their cur curriculum. 
So basically, what are we going to do? Creationism or evolution? It's evolution, baby! Mm. So I think we did both theories when I did centrism. So we're going to say, I don't agree with teaching our children supernatural nonsense like creationism. That's great to hear. It sounds like we're already aligned on the matter. Uh, excuse me, some urgent business kept me away. Welcome, Mr. Gallade. Mr. President, Miss Balda. Uh, we were just discussing the curriculum. Kiara has made some excellent points. Very well, let's hear them. Continuing from my previous point, it is my conviction we should require the mandatory teaching of evolution in Swordland's public schools and cut creationism completely out. If we want children from rural areas to have the same opportunities as their urban counterparts, this is the way. Opening children's students' minds and reducing the role of religion in schools will lead to more equality between young men and women. Oh, whoops! What the heck? I think I it must have hit hotkey. Miss Walda, don't bring your pet cause into this. Mr. President, there are other considerations you may not have thought about. Although I myself believe in evolution, we must be careful not to alienate our rural conservative voter base. They're getting hospitals and schools. They'll get over this. Every modern nation is reducing or removing creationism in their curriculum. Yet we're supposed to allow schools to promote fundamental and, yes, sexist ideas from a thousand years back. So is uh, that what we're doing now? Copying what other nations are doing instead of paving our own way? If it works, why not? Look at the analysis. It is clear that the superpowers are doing something right. Should we reinvent the wheel, Mr. Gallade? You speak as if we don't import any influences from other countries. That's not what I said. Um, evolution is the way forward. Creationism has no place in the public school curriculum. Thank you. As I said, it's the only way to produce a new generation of thinkers. There are other methods of bringing swordland forward, ones that don't sever our ties with an entire voter base. It's your decision, meaning me. Don't forget, future generations of swordish youth are counting on you. Geez, they like really want to make sure it's like, are you sure, 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 sure you want to do this? No, we, we, we could do the, I think it's more, I think it's better for the role play if we do strictly evolution. Uh, from now on, uh, creationism shall be banned and only evolution will be taught in schools. Excellent decision, Mr. Rain. As your street strategist, my job is to advise you on the political landscape and I can guarantee this won't do us well. Sometimes there are more important things, Mr. Gallade, like ideals. The meeting ended shortly after. Okay, ooh, big news, big news. Nationalize the big four now. Oh, the whole sword post firmly believes President Rain should come down on the side of nationalization for all of the so-called big four companies, including the currently fully private Heart of Swordland and Bergia Steel. This is very interesting because, if I remember correctly, the whole Sword Post were the ones who had Young Swords on their edit, or former Young Swords at least, or no, even current ones, in there. Uh, so I wonder if that's because we've announced the alliance with the NFP, or if because the whole Sword Post likes us now because we unbanned the Young Swords, but yeah. Full nationalization would prevent price gouging and prevent CEOs like Marcel Caronti from consolidating power. Huh. Overblown rights case appealed. Political dismiss the case of systemic racism. Many justices have come forward to dispute the claim. The Constitution is not being upheld by the state of when it comes to treatment of blush people. Gazzaro raises the bloodish question. Educate people suddenly in the official language of the country. Dyer prepares for the day of dissension. Privatization is the future of Swordland. Swordland today, I thought you were on my side. Or am I getting them mixed up? Evolution. Get used to it or get out of the way. And big win for science as rain forces schools to evolve. Nice wordplay. Swayed by the valid arguments of education minister Clara Valda, President Rain made the decision to ban the teaching of creationism in public schools and made evolution a mandatory part of the curriculum. This switch is a huge step forward for Swordland's rural youth, who have long been at an educational disadvantage compared to their urban counterparts, and a welcome display of clear headedness from the Rain administration. Man, a lot, lot of stuff happening in this turn. And uh, what's going on over here? The economy, the Bergia economy is stabilizing. 
The Anglan economy is stabilizing. Good, good. Uh, do we want to do one more thing? Lobby the assembly. Um, I don't know. Do we want to do this? Possibly, possibly not. Uh, hmm. I don't know. Uh, I think this is the one where, is this my personal money or not? The administration can start a lobbying effort to sway votes. Um, Chief strategist Lucien Gallet has prepared a well-planned lobbying effort uh, in the parliament, which would include sway on the fence MPs uh, for the upcoming constitution vote. This plan includes lavish parties, gifts, and even some political failures. Should we go ahead with the plan? Uh, man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I could, I have the four personal wealth to spend. Uh. Maybe spend just a little bit of money. Just one personal well. Mm. What do we want to do here? God, the four is awful. Just, you know what? Just a little bit. Let's just maybe tune up a couple of people here and there. A little bit of money. And we don't have the anti-corruption police, so we're going to be fine. So let's go ahead and hit the continue. Hey! Chapter 3! All right! We made it, boys and girls. Uh-oh. Don't you crash on me now. Don't go crash in my PC. Come on. What's going on here? All right, we're getting a call from Marcel Caronti. We will deal with that next time, I suppose. Uh, Volgishman's shot. Highway's not improving. And there's the agricultural zone. Okay, well, that's enough for today. Thank you very much for joining me. I'm Conquering History Games, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.